Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Stellar Lumens, aka XLM. So with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night where you guys are out there in the world. So tokenization is a term that you've probably heard a hundred times already on this channel in just the last couple of weeks, because tokenization is one of the biggest things to watch for, especially if you are in the space for the technology, for the utility, for the future, and even in the short term because in the short term, there's a ton of money to be made by investing into protocols and networks that these institutions, these big players are eyeing because of the efficiencies behind them. Now, in my prior Stellar XLM video, I did talk about a few things highlighting why institutions love Stellar for tokenization. One of the big things, and it's actually a thing that the XRP ledger is trying to implement through an amendment, is the clawback feature that a lot of people freaked out about. Oh, clawback, that, that's bad. It's actually not. And the reason why is because institutions have to follow a regulatory, mandatory breakdown. One of those things that are in that breakdown is being able to have that clawback feature in any solution that you are utilizing. So if you are utilizing a tokenization solution and it doesn't have a clawback, well, guess what? That institution can now get into a lot of problems, legality issues, they can get sued. There's a lot of problems, right? So having that is a big plus one and Stellar does have that. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about why things are changing rapidly right now around this space, specifically when it comes to tokenization, adoption, things like that. So let's first start off with what we just recently saw from the FDIC vice chair, which said tokenization beginning to deliver benefits. Now, it it's kind of interesting on where we are at right now in this space because um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been around crypto for a while and it feels as though we're kind of morphing into this space where crypto is becoming more and more legitimate day by day. There's a lot more maturity happening around this space. And when I mean that, I don't mean in terms of the investment vehicles because meme coins are still stealing the show, but I'm talking about legitimate organizations, um, government entities, even companies, institutions, you name it. They're embracing the technology. They're looking at it and they're saying like, this has a lot of benefits. There's still a lot of noise and there's still a lot of fillers in the space that we need to kind of work around. But for the most part, there is some great things within this space. And I think that as we do inch closer and closer and closer to that, we also have to eye regulations because Regulations is what's going to really put this space on the map. Why? Well, because all the garbage is going to evaporate overnight. And when I say that, I do mean a lot of the meme coin agenda and all the nonsense. That is just coins that people are pumping millions and millions of dollars into just to surge it higher and higher and higher. They push it, push it, push it. They hype it. And guess what? When the hype dies down, so does everyone's investment. I'm looking at this space in terms of technology and legitimacy more now than ever before, because I do think that we're getting closer and closer to that last step. And I think that it is evident when you have the FDIC here talking about regulatory clarity on technology, its uses, and especially what we consider safe and sound. We have a few things, one, but there are significant downsides to the FDIC's current approach which has contributed to a general public perception that the FDIC is closed for business if institutions are interested in anything related to blockchain or DLT. The confidential nature of the existing process means there is little public information on what types of activities the FDIC might be open to, if any. We also have down here, so the on balance sheet designation makes it prohibitively challenging for banks to engage in this activity at any scale. It is worth asking whether it is the public interest for one crypto exchange to provide custody services for most of the market in approved Bitcoin exchange traded products, while highly regulated banks are effectively excluded from the market. And that's where we really look at tokenization. We have his remarks delved into tokenization, which he said transforms the way ownership of assets is recorded and enables far reaching new functions. And through the use of blockchain, he said commercial bank deposits, government and corporate bonds, money market fund shares, gold and other commodities can improve the way we transfer value by operating 24-7, 365, not to even mention liquidity, um, opportunities, instant settlement, things like that. It's a big deal. 
Tokenization is already beginning to deliver benefits, Hill said, smoothing and speeding uh, settlement times for multi-currency bond issuance. In the future, the benefits could expand to uh, retail. To give one example, programmability may be able to simplify the home buying process by eliminating the need to place funds in escrow prior to closing. Now, as we do hear this, right, as we do read this and we look at a few things happening here, um, there was also a recent article from the Federal Reserve where we have the Federal Reserve now putting a spotlight on DeFi initiatives. We also got a breakdown just recently from the BIS actually on March 14th as well, talking about DeFi borrower behavior key to gauging tokenization risk. And what's funny about this is it's the same exact thing that we heard from the Federal Reserve essentially. And to simplify that article, basically the Federal Reserve was saying that the DeFi space could essentially help the dollar. It could push the dollar forward because of the um, stable coins that are backed by the dollar, things like that. But this is more so talking about tokenization risk. Um, and everything is now fully focused on DeFi and tokenization. Like now you have the, the central bank of central banks literally addressing DeFi, talking about the space openly. Like it's kind of hard not to think that we are moving away from the speculation and we're kind of inching closer to that endpoint. And that's where a lot of these projects like Stellar and Ripple, Hedera, you name it, they all become key players. Chainlink has also been focused on this. Um, he, the, the executive from Chainlink actually just recently said that leading banks have begun tokenizing real world assets. And we actually know this because of what St Stellar has been doing as well with some very large names like Franklin Templeton and even um, Wisdom Tree. Over here, there's actually a great uh, post by the CEO at Cheesecake Labs on LinkedIn, and we have the impact of tokenization is significant. Blockchain technology has been aiding financial institutions in enhancing operational efficiency, including increased security, faster transaction processing, and lower costs for traditional financial products. And of course, it offers greater transparency. Franklin Templeton, Wisdom Tree, Bitbond, and ABN um, Amro Bank NV have collectively uh, collectively uh, tokenized over $341 million on Stellar. And these are still pretty large names. I mean, they're not like the biggest names. Franklin Templeton is a large name though. Um, I've always spotlighted Franklin Templeton considering the fact that they have over $1.5 trillion in assets under management. They are a big leader. Wisdom Tree, they're not as big, but they're still a very large name out there in the traditional world. Um, and if you look down here, they have over 106 billion in assets under management globally, um, and they are still a pretty big name. The Stellar blockchain is specifically designed and optimized for asset tokenization, which we do know. Listen, if you go over to the asset tokenization um, use case on the Stellar website, it fully breaks down on why Stellar is built for asset tokenization. It's pretty much the same exact breakdown that we do get from um, Ripple or even if you go to like the Hedera website. Most of them do kind of break down the same exact thing, which is expand your offerings, program your assets, enable real-time settlement. And this is all done because of the flexibility of Stellar and what it does provide. But also remember, there's a few things behind the tech stack that you're not actually seeing. Like for an example, you have that clawback amendment. But even here, right, they kind of get to that point where you have the fast, right, the confirmation, transactions are on the Stellar network confirm in just seconds, low cost. And then you have the compliance and controls. Like I said, that's why I, I focus on the clawback amendment, because this is built in account level features enable custom asset controls, such as KYC, freeze and clawback functionality. A lot of people don't like this idea, but remember, if you want big institutions to actually build and leverage this technology, you need to have those compliant features built in. But we also have sustainability, quick to market, and then also scalability. And uh, here we have issue an asset in four steps, fully breaks it down, seller asset sandbox as well. And then these are the companies that are um, building out on seller and actually leveraging it for tokenization endeavors. You could also see the um, assets on the network down here as well. And then you also have these service providers who are the ones that are actually providing um, tokenization services for any needs. Fireblocks is a big one. I've talked about Fireblocks in the past, um, large name. But also if we go back up and we look at some of these companies, right? So this is the highlighted partners. Now I did include this in a recent video, but what I didn't include is the four tokenization um, projects that are actually on Stellar. Securency did rebrand recently, which we will get to that here in a second. But when we look at Bit, NextXD, and then also Settle, these are three pretty large names regardless of how you look at it. 
for example, Settle initially is um, a, a large player out there. They're trusted by the best. They have some pretty great projects under their belt already. Um, they do provide some great case studies and use cases already on their uh, website. If you guys did want to go check that out, for example, here are some uh, Settle stories. Like, yeah, Ping, receiving U.S. payments has never been easier. It's more so focused on P2P. Uh, the Latin area is one of the biggest ones that have been focused on around crypto because it's one that has been embracing uh, crypto for what it is. Um, again, you can look more around this website if you wanted to and go look at some of the um, other case studies. Some of the videos are not um, available anymore, like this one from the Vibrant case. But you can actually find this use case on the Stellar website and find the video as well. Um, but you can see the full breakdown of it. Now, this is just one. Settle is still a, uh, an early on company. Like I said, it's not a massive giant or anything. Um, not like Bit or uh, Security, for example. And the reason why I say that is because when we go over to Bit, for example, this is banking innovation through technology. This is harness the power of digital currencies. We enable the digitalization of national currencies. And uh, if we scroll down here, we have the industry standards or uh, ind industry solutions. Um, we are the world's leading digital currency experts. We provide central bank digital currency and stablecoin solutions for central banks, financial institutions, governments, and financial ecosystem participants worldwide. And um, again, this is one that I've been looking into more and more, especially during recent times as CBDCs become a much heavier topic. Now, am I bullish on CBDCs? No, but they are inevitable, right? 93% of uh, central banks are now looking at CBDCs, but we have central banks here, financial institutions, and even governments. And you can see how all of this um, is kind of flowing together. You can see what they're doing. Like for an example, you have the CBDC workshop, sandbox pilot and deployment. Over here, you have the CBDC and stablecoin workshop for financial institutions because they do want stablecoins as well. Then you also have the sandbox. You have the CBDC pilot, stablecoin pilot, CBDC and stablecoin deployment, CBDC and stablecoin workshop, sandbox pilot, and also the, uh, the deployment. Now, again, when it comes to Bit and Stellar, you can actually see what is happening over here. Um, so BIT provides CBDC and stablecoin solutions for central banks, financial institutions, and governments. The way that I look at this is if we go back up to, um, if we go back to the real world or the real use case and we go to asset tokenization, all right, this is where I think that BIT is more so leveraging Stellar fully. And it's more so about enabling CBDCs and stablecoins and issuing out them on the network. Because that's exactly what Ripple is doing through their um, endeavors as well on the XRP Ledger or even a private XRP Ledger um, endeavor. And even if we scroll down, we could see some of the success stories. And we could prove the fact that when we go back to Stellar, and like I said, when they're issuing out CBDCs, stablecoins, and stuff like that on Stellar, here you could actually see that they are issuing out this uh, pilot program on Stellar. And, and this is, I want to say that this is a little bit older of an initiative, but it is still something to note considering the fact that they were pushing this pretty heavily and it is something that they have solved. Um, but I don't know if they are continuing this work. I know that they did solve like a lot of great things from it. You can see the key facts around this. You can see the objectives as well. Um, but this was on Stellar and this is around the Ukraine. But outside of this, right, if we scroll back down and we see some of those uh, companies building out, so let me go back to the full ecosystem. The next one on the list in terms of uh, tokenization endeavors is Security. Now, like I said, Security did rebrand. Um, the DTCC did acquire them, which is a major player. Um, and we could actually see that DTCC Digital Assets, formerly Security, was pleased to partner with City, Wellington, Management, and Wisdom Tree in an innovative proof of concept on tokenization of private assets. Now, why is this significant to know? Well, it's because this is tokenization endeavors. All right. And it's all to reimagine compliance, liquidity, efficiency, and interoperability in trading real world assets on the blockchain. Now, like I said, going back to those initial statements, Wisdom Tree is already tapped in with Stellar. And this is not old. This is just one month ago, for an example. And if you actually go back to my video just recently on Stellar, you could see that they have been tokenizing on Stellar. And guess what? Stellar was a partner of Security. They were really tapped in on bringing liquidity and access to new digital assets through compliance-aware tokenization. And going back to why Stellar is built out for um, tokenization endeavors, let's go back to the use case just to show you guys real quick. Compliance is a big focus. They provide everything that you need in order to be compliant. Security is 100% focused on compliance. And when we go into the PDF file, Here's financial markets forward. Like I said, everything's changing. The entire world of finance is changing. When we scroll back down here, 
All right, we can see their products and services, but down here is when you get a little bit of a glimpse on how big the DTCC actually is. 2.5 quadrillion dollars in securities processed back in 2022. We have fixed income clearing, which is four and a half trillion per day, by the way. Settlement and asset services, 1.4 trillion. Active US issues worth 72 trillion. Um, equities clearing, 214 million. And we actually have broker to broker transactions cleared daily worth 2 trillion for 50 plus exchanges and trading venues. And then trade reporting 17 billion messages processed annually for 10,800 plus firms globally, 60 plus regulators across the globe have access to our data from um, across 35 countries as well. That's why I say like as we look at the DTCC and what they've done with uh, security, it does make me think back to all of the partners on the security list, which was Wisdom Tree. You have Copper on here as well. Um, you have State Street and stuff like that. But then Stellar was also a big player on that list. And again, Wisdom Tree is still tapped in on Stellar because of what Stellar is providing. I really do think that everyone needs to be focused on what Stellar is doing and what they have become, especially in the short term, because just recently they've started to become a big, big player. And I really think it initially started back in um, roughly 2022, where tokenization really started to heat up. But Stellar has been absolutely killing it, guys. I'm telling you. And a lot of what we are seeing right now around traditional finance, it's kind of morphing into tokenization, blockchain. Let's tap into this. Let's tap into that. Let's test a few things. And we're getting closer than ever before and i'm very excited about this so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on if you guys more free content if you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord in the description below and with that being said guys it's been nick thanks for watching peace out